As Roger Goodell continues to stonewall the public on independent investigator Beth Wilkinson's report, the public is demanding answers. Many, including myself, believe the NFL is hiding something very, very big. PFT called it a potential bombshell. We have now learned more of Daniel Snyder, his actions, his fragile ego, and what he does behind the scenes via the great journalism of many in the sports media field. When Wilkinson began investigating allegations of widespread spread sexual harassment in the Washington football team workplace, she learned of a decade-old allegation of sexual misconduct against team owner Daniel Snyder. A few weeks later, Wilkinson sought to interview the former team employee who had made the accusation according to people familiar with the investigation. The kicker throughout was Goodell setting the parameters as follows. Wilkinson and her team will conduct the investigation, but they will report to Goodell and the NFL, meaning the NFL has the final say and will go into full-on damage control. It was a move Snyder and his wife Tanya agreed with and said Wilkinson, along with the league, will have their full cooperation. Cooperation is exactly the opposite of what occurred. Snyder's attorneys attempted to prevent Wilkinson from speaking to Snyder's accuser, according to a letter the woman's attorney wrote to Snyder's lawyers that was filed in federal court. Per the Post reporting, Snyder's lawyers are accused of offering more money if the alleged victim agreed not to speak to anyone about the allegations against Snyder and her settlement with the team. In court filings, Wilkinson later described phone calls to Sullivan from Snyder's lawyers as an attempt to silence the 2009 accuser. Sullivan is the lawyer for the woman who accused Snyder of misconduct. Snyder, who has run the team since purchasing it in 99, faces very serious accusations. His lawyers filed petitions in federal court seeking in part to identify former employees who had spoken to the Post. An effort one federal judge suggested was intended to burden and harass former employees who had spoken to reporters. But just wait. It gets worse. Private investigators working on Snyder's behalf, meanwhile, showed up uninvited at the homes of several former employees or contacted their friends and relatives, according to these former employees or their attorneys, acts many of them viewed as intimidation aimed at discouraging former employees from participating in the NFL's investigation. Dan Snyder, owner of the Washington Commanders, has been able to get away with a lot in his time running the team. Uh, what I did realize was that uh, I've always been a Redskin fan from his ridiculous non-stop defense of a racist name. This is a guy who has made himself uh, into a, a caricature of what an evil football owner, how that guy would behave. Snyder is holding firm on the position he took earlier this month in a letter to fans, in which he ruled out any name change, writing, We are Redskins Nation, and we owe it to our fans and coaches and players, past and present, to preserve that heritage. Uh, and then, of course, is the team name and his sort of defiance and fake effort to reach out to Native Americans with his Original Americans Foundation. Oaf. They didn't think that one through all the way. They have reached a settlement with a former team employee who accused owner Dan Snyder of sexual misconduct in 2009, according to multiple reports. The Washington Post reports the settlement is for $1.6 million. The New York Times is reporting that Snyder paid the settlement to avoid negative publicity. And both the Post and the Times report that the woman was fired after making the allegations. Two incredibly serious allegations that it appears the NFL has covered up for him. Has Dan Snyder been held accountable adequately in your opinion and, and is there more to be done there? Uh, I do think he's been held accountable. They set up a website called, uh, a Twitter handle called Redskins Facts which would be the truth about the team, and they pretended that it was sort of organic and started by players, but it was very easily traceable to the PR firm that the team had hired. Daniel Snyder, a person with real power, probably won't face real consequences for his disastrous stewardship of this team. The players, the fans, they all deserve better than Dan Snyder. Also sued the Washington City paper, tried to close them down, threatened them by saying, hey, you're a free newspaper and I have all the money in the world, I'll sue you forever, because they suggested, they drew a picture of him with a devil horns on it and did a A to Z, 50 things to hate about Dan Snyder. All of what my colleague Ben Mankiewicz said is true. And not only that, there is so much more that was even left out. One of those stories being, <laughs> allegedly, 
When he has people over as guests in his house, he has to have the highest chair and he makes them sit in lower chairs. So they have to look up at him and he could look down on them. He's a deplorable, loathsome, soulless coward of a human being. And that's putting it mildly. ESPN has learned Snyder has told associates he's used private investigators and other sources to gather enough secrets to blow up several NFL owners and NFL commissioner Roger Goodell. He never says exactly what he knows, only that in his 23 years as owner of the commanders, he knows a lot. And that in the zero-sum world of billionaires, this is how you survive, wrote Seth Wickersham, Don Van Natta, and Tisha Thompson. They can't F with me, he has said privately. Snyder thinks he has enough on all of them, a former senior commander's executive told ESPN. He thinks he's got stuff on Roger. The NFL is a mafia, Snyder recently told another associate. All the owners hate each other. That's not true, a veteran owner told ESPN. All the owners hate Dan. 